Good evening YouTube, this is the LA Engineer here and tonight we're going to talk about something very important, local and global reference frames. Now, what is all this business about? Well, it's kind of one of the foundations of the class to be honest. You have to be able to express points in one frame and another frame and that will become clear perhaps the longer you watch these videos, but for now let's take a very simple example all right let's start with the global reference frame and when i say global let's just maybe call it the normal or the regular reference frame don't let that word global fool you it just means like the big one that encompasses all the other frames you could have a little frame here and a little frame there a frame just means an axis in this case you know y x this could be like x2 y2 that could be like x3 y3 i could want to have one over here that's like x4 y4 so these are all little local frames this x y is the global frame i could even put down here if you really want to global reference frame global reference frame okay so we have global reference frame we have this other axis right here, which is 90 degrees. This is X prime, Y prime. So what is going on with this axis? This axis is at a different orientation. It is actually at an angle, and sorry, I sort of draw my phi's like thetas, but this is supposed to be a phi. <clears throat> so the local reference frame, and we'll say here, local um, we'll just call this like the skewed reference frame skewed slash shifted so this is a reference frame in the global reference frame that we have to somehow relate to the global reference frame and of course we do this with the magical rotation matrix but before we get there talk about a couple vectors here so ideally what we want to be able to do and let me uh, R, P. So, this is the point in the local reference frame. We know where it is in the local reference frame. It's at 1, 1. We don't know where it is in the global reference frame. There's a lot of reasons that this might be the case, but just forget about those and pretend that that's what's going on. I want you to look at a couple of these vectors here. We have the R vector. This is the vector from the origin. Origin. To the origin and we can call sort of call this like origin global reference frame we can kind of call this like the origin of the local reference frame so we need to first figure out how to get from this origin to this origin and we do that with the r vector put origin to origin the standard the standard representation of this vector, and this is going to make sense the further we go, is x, y. Because we're using this to sort of set up constraint equations, we're not always going to identify this any further than just saying the position of this is x and y in the global reference frame. This is in the global reference frame. So let's just kind of put that aside and say that this origin over here is located at a point x, y. That will be good enough for now. So this other vector we're looking at, s, p, that's how you get from the origin, the local reference frame, to point p, which is right here. And what we're really after is the addition of these two vectors. We want r of p. We want to go from the global all the way directly to point p in one fail swoop and how do we do that we go r plus a theta s prime p okay so what is the rotation matrix the rotation matrix is a matrix that helps us go from one frame to the other in 2d is it a two it is a 2d matrix we have cosine of phi negative sine of phi sine of phi and cosine of phi what the hell is this this is a matrix we use to rotate go from these coordinates to the other frame. 
local frame we'll put in parentheses local to global rotation matrix that's what it does all right now last ingredient we need you know we're kind of like cooking here we need this ingredient we need this ingredient we need this ingredient we need to combine these to make a separate ingredient and then we need to combine all of them to make this ingredient this is the cake this is like the wet ingredients this is all the dry ingredients or vice versa you mix all the dry ingredients then you mix the dry and the wet and then you put in the oven you get the cake so let's keep making this cake what is s prime of p this is the vector from the local reference frame to point p so like we said this is the vector from the local reference frame origin sorry the local reference frame the origin of the local reference frame to point p now most cases they're going to tell you what this is the the complicated part is kind of go from local to global so we're not necessarily trying to just make a guess at what p is in this case i'm saying p is 1 1 for the purpose of this example so and because we're doing some algebra here we can't just say 1 comma 1 you know like that we have to say uh, s prime p equals 1 1 like that and of course the reason is because now we have to put r of p together so we're going to go r P in the global reference frame equals R the local reference frame plus A theta S prime P. Sorry, that looks like an R. So let's put together our ingredients. R of P equals just say XY. Sort of, you know, sometimes people say like XI or X prime, but let's just say XY for now. You know, if you wanted to call this like X1, Y1, you could call this like X1, Y1 or something, but we'll just leave it like this. We have cosine, negative sine. Also, of course, typically when you have multiple reference frames, you're going to have like phi1, phi2, phi3. We're keeping this simple for now. So, this is our... This is A, phi, and then we have S prime P, which goes right here, which is 1, 1. And of course, we have a 2 by 2 matrix multiplied by a 2 by 1. Going to end up, these match, we're going to end up with a 2 by 1. Which, actually, it looks the other way, but that's okay. So... R, oh, I'm running out of space here. R of P equals XY plus, so we're going to go cosine phi this times this plus this times that. So we're going to go cosine phi plus negative sine. And then on the second row, we have sine phi plus cosine phi. Add this all together, we get x plus cosine phi minus sine phi and y plus cosine phi plus sine. I changed the order so that we can kind of see what's going on there so this is the how we get to this vector and to carry on from the previous example where we did the partial derivative let's go ahead and take a partial of this so we have x plus cosine phi minus sine phi and y plus cosine phi plus sine all right so this is our r p so now let's find r q 
Q for example um, and to be fair we're not always going to be doing the Jacobian of like a vector to a point but just since I have this here we'll just go ahead and do this so Q equals X Y typically you're going to be doing Jacobian of all those constraints together but we'll sort of get to that a little bit later So this is going to equal, let's see, we got two equations, we got three of those, this is going to be a two by three. So let's go like that, and then da, 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 da. I know the phi one's going to be the longest term. Let's go like that. So we have dr dx, dr dy, and dr d phi. So first row, with respect to x, we have one. We don't have any y's. That's going to be a zero. With respect to phi, we have negative sine phi, and we have minus cosine phi. Second row, with respect to x, zero. With respect to y, oh, that looks like a freaking theta. With respect to y, one. With respect to phi, we have negative sine phi and plus cosine so there you have it folks we had a point we had a global reference frame we had a local reference frame right here in fact I'll give you just a little sorry I'm going to hold the camera and do this at the same time so we had the global reference frame we had the local reference frame we had a point P at location in the local frame, x prime, y prime of 1, 1. We used the generalized equation R plus A phi S prime P to represent point P in the global reference frame. We then took a look at what the individual components were. We have A, the rotation matrix, which is the same for all multi-body dynamics. The only thing that's going to change is what the value is phi is. You might have phi 1, you might have phi 2. Just keep in mind, if this is phi 1, they're all phi 1s. If it's phi 2, they're all phi 2s. These are never going to be different phi's than each other because they're transferring all the coordinates based on this angle. At least in this example, it's that angle. If it was this one, it would be that angle. If it was this one, it would be that angle. If it was this one, it would be like that angle. So, we have the A matrix. The R, sorry, the R matrix is XY. We're not worried so much about how to get to XY initially because we're making constraints so we can solve the problem. We have the rotation matrix. We have S prime of P, which is how to get to P in the local frame. We take R plus the product of A of phi times S prime of P, which is this plus this times this, which gives us this plus this which gives us R of P in the global reference frame, global reference frame of X plus cosine phi minus sine phi and Y plus cosine phi plus sine phi. And just to summarize again, once you have theta and once you know what X is and what Y is, this is how you get from zero to this point. And then, if you want to do the partial derivative of that with respect to the vector q, or the generalized coordinates x, y, and phi, we have 1, 0 in this, and 0, 1 in this. Thanks for watching this short video on how to find a point in the global reference frame. This is the LA Engineer, signing out until next time.